Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. My name is Heyman. And in this video, I'll be talking to you about product life cycle. In the product life cycle, on the X axis, we have the timeline of product usage. The timeline could be in hours, kilometers, or cycles. And on the vertical axis, we have the instantaneous hazard rate or the failure rate. So this product life cycle depicts how the hazard rate changes over a period of time during the product usage. There are three distinct phases of product life cycle. First phase, early life failures. Second phase, random failures. Third phase, wear out failures. If you take the sum total of all three, you will see that the combined hazard rate follows something like a bathtub and therefore this is called a bathtub curve. Let us consider the early life failures. The early life failure period has decreasing hazard rate, as you will see. So over a period of time, the failure rate or the hazard rate goes down. And generally the hazard rate decreases and becomes nearly zero before the warranty period of the product is over. This phase is also often called burn-in period sometimes called infant mortality period or debugging period or break-in period. As you will see, the hazard rate is going down and the phase is nearly over at this time. The particular time for particular product may vary. The failures during the early life failures are predominantly due to manufacturing and assembly and process defects. These could include welding flaws, boundary defects, cracks, material defects, contamination, poor quality control. So the defects that occur during manufacturing and do not get captured in the manufacturing inspection or final inspection would actually pass on to the customer. Let us look at how to minimize or how to reduce the impact of the early life failures. The first and foremost requirement is better process and quality control. There are many techniques such as statistical process control and all the product control uh, conditions, process controls, uh, the process parameters must be controlled exactly as the way designer has designed the process. Obviously, better quality control would result into process capabilities and we have to reduce the variation so that the process capability index CP and CPK exceeds the desired values, typically more than 1.5 or often 1.67. Sometimes, for the, especially for the electronic products, burn-in testing is performed. There are special furnaces for the burn-in testing and uh, the typical cycle for burn-in is soaking the product at high temperature for about 72 hours. So the electronic assembly which has been manufactured is uh, put into this kind of a chamber and left there for 72 hours. And because of the heat, it is expected that any solder defects or any loose contacts will get surfaced out and these quality defects get, uh, get uh, screened out during the burn-in testing. Burn-in testing is a production process and 100% product goes to the burn-in testing. A more rigorous idea of testing is environmental stress screening or in the short form is ESS. The furnaces can be more sophisticated. The ESS cycles typically include uh, yeah, the ESS cycles typically include 
rapid thermal cycles or uh, random vibrations and other cycles so that the uh, defective products get screened out and uh, actually fails during ESS cycles. Further to ESS, there is more rigorous testing method that is sometimes uh, deployed and that is highly accelerated stress screening or HAS. The highly accelerated stress screening process is similar to ESS, but the cycles are more rapid and faster. And again, the product goes through 100% of HAS testing. Let us look at the random failures. The random failures occur uh, later on and these occur because of the uh, environmental factors, human errors, random loads, etc. As you can see, the hazard rate during this period is constant. Let us look at some suggested actions to prevent the impact of random failures. One of the uh, techniques that the designers would use is to increase the design margins. You can see that this is the strength curve and this is the load curve. So if you increase the difference between these two curves, if they are uh, quite apart, then there is no chance that uh, during the higher loads, still the strength is sufficient to prevent such failures. So you increase the design margins. Another technique that is used, uh, which came from Dr. Tabuchi, is robust design. Robust design actually deals with uh, making the product less sensitive to the uh, to the noise factors or uh, other factors which are not under the control of the designer. We have redundancy in case you cannot improve the reliability of in individual components then you have components in parallel so that if one component fails still the other can still uh, keep the system working and that is called a redundancy but that is not exactly improving reliability of imp individual components but this technique can be used to improve the reliability of system there is a technique called stress and strength analysis and this is similar to the higher design margins but here we are trying to analyze the load cycle and the uh, cycle for stress. We model these two cycles, perform some kind of analysis, often using Monte Carlo simulation and find out what is the probability of failure in a single load cycle. And we try to reduce this probability by uh, improving the strength of materials or reducing the load variations which of course may not be under the designer's control. The fault tolerance is also another idea, but again, the fault tolerant systems actually uh, tolerate some degree of uh, failures. It doesn't exactly prevent failure, but a failure of a particular component does not uh, significantly affect the overall system performance. That is what is called fault tolerance. Now let us look at the wear out failures. And that is the last phase of this product life cycle. The, in the wear out uh, failure period, the hazard rate tends to increase as you can see here. And failures are predominantly uh, due to fatigue, excessive wear, corrosion, aging, friction, etc. In this phase, the failure rate tends to increase. How to minimize the end of life failures? This is similar to uh, the second phase that is random failures, but uh, definitely this is under designer's control and better materials and higher design margins would reduce the probability of uh, failures during this end of life and it would extend the life of the product. 
there is a technique called accelerated life testing in which we increase the stress level and reduce the uh, test durations but then we do it at uh, three stress levels and then establish this curve which is decided by the law of physics and we extend this curve and try to extrapolate and find out what could be the life at the normal operating conditions so it requires a mathematical treatment and using the laws of physics and uh, complex calculations are involved but it has uh, it has been uh, becoming quite popular in the modern reliability uh, engineering again we have uh, another technique called highly accelerated life test or halt h a l t the highly accelerated life test uh, is performed at the initial development stage of product and it's uh, sometimes called discovery testing the purpose of highly accelerated uh, life test is to discover latent failure modes and the product is subjected to very high stress levels which are generally not observed in real life the idea here is not to find out the life of the product but only to find out the failure modes and the designer would address those failure modes improve the design and perform the halt test again so this is performed at the development stage